Hey, Veronica. Hello, I can't see you. Something happened. You can't, can't see me. Hmm. Okay, hold on. Hello, system resources. Hello, everybody. Hey, Hello. Everybody. Can you see our yeah. mic? Yeah. No. It, it's the system. I'll figure it out in a minute. Okay. I went to the club today to do exercises. You went to you the did? club? You mean you, went yeah, to, you mean you went to the Benson Center? Yeah, I called the Old People Club, but that's our club. <laughs> we go there okay. to exercise, to eat, to learn uh -huh. something, and to flirt. So. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, 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 you got flirting done? Huh? Did you get any flirting done? Well, no, no. Oh well, the only one there was Linda goes by the uh, uh, by the desk. But no, I went there. I, I saw Nicole and I did my twenty minutes. And then Nicole told me, "It's time for you to go." More people, other people are coming. So okay, okay, yeah, yeah. They're being they're being a little bit strict on that. You know, they want to, you know, kind of keep you safe, keep you in that window. So they're trying to keep the number of people down. And uh, I, I know, you know, for those who who want social interaction, that's, you know, that's that's kind of antithetical to what you're wanting. But, you know, it is what it is right now. So and I I found out for those who are interested that CVS is provided the booster shot. But, uh, you know, uh, some provide Modena, other provide Pfizer, so we have to find the right pharmacy. Mm -hmm. But they are already provided the booster shot. Okay. Now, but if they're providing the booster shot, it, is that covered? You know, I mean, is there a charge for that? I don't know if I went to get mad to this one close, uh, close to, to the center, and this one has... Uh, Pfizer and my is Modena, so I have to go another one. Yeah, yeah. I, I got the Pfizer, so I guess I could go get that if I if I were so yeah. inclined and wanted to get a booster shot. So, but it, you know, it's a thought. You know, mm -hmm. we just went yesterday to uh, Walgreens mm -hmm. and got a. Uh, a Pfizer because the, our first one were Pfizer's and we both got it, no big deal. Mm -hmm. You got a booster shot. Yeah, it just uh, it takes uh, paperwork and paperwork. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did you... I call you were I'm in class. You know, my, my, remember, my, right? my I'm class? to be an artist. So I've been in class from two to four. What? All right, Armando. Um, um, so my uh, question is, um, did you have to pay for that out of pocket or did? No, no, it's all uh, Medicare and that's it. Okay, all right. We pay for that charge for 50 or 60 years. We put money in Medicare well, and so on. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I understand that. <laughs> my question though is if somebody went to go get a booster shot, you know, are they charging for it or like a, a lot of the a lot of the uh, vaccinations, uh, like for example, you know the one that Maria got up here, which was I think she got Moderna. Um, you know there was no charge, you know, no. through Walgreens for that. Now I'm wondering whether they're going to be charging for the booster yeah. shots or not. The only shot they charge you is <laughs> the uh, shingle shot. The rest are free for mm -hmm. us. Yeah, she well, will, yes, she well, was about two hundred dollars. Yeah, well, that's because you have Medicare, and Medicare covers it. Okay, and I'm kind of thinking about people who don't have Medicare because she's oh, well, that's young for that. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know whether they're having insurance cover that or whether you've got to pay out of pocket. You know, things like that. So anyway, but that's interesting that uh, you know that some of you are going out and getting booster shots at this point. So that's that's something that's been discussed. I, you know, I don't think they've made a definitive 
decision as to whether that's actually beneficial and needed or not. But uh, yeah. last I heard, they were recommending that just for people who had uh, like any kind of health issue that would compromise their immune system. Mm -hmm. and, and that's we want, we want to stay alive so we will keep you busy. Well, you know, I would like that actually, you know, I mean, I, you know, I kind of, I kind of like you guys, you know, we're going to hang around for a while, you know, hang, hang, hang around as long as you can. Hang around. kind of like you too, Charles. Well, thank you for that. Okay. So is every, is everybody dry today? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So nobody's yeah. suffering from, uh, Water saturation, leaky roofs—you know, things like that. That's good. Not and not and not, and we are just just inside and, and, I'm, and waiting for your class. That's all. Okay. All right. Well, yesterday you know. I'm sorry. Yesterday I missed it because we went to get the shots. Oh, okay. All right. Well, yeah, I was kind of wondering about how everybody's doing because uh, I think they said that we're we could get up to six inches of rain today. Oh, it's it's capped over here in Marietta, but it rained really hard. Yeah. I well, went it, to the grocery store and it, it was bad. Yeah. Well, just wait, just wait a few minutes because it's raining in Smyrna, which means it will be raining in Marietta here just any minute now. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> right. the sound is spring. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's it's gonna hit you guys next but it's yeah it uh this is like the fourth time today it's like the fourth wave that we've hit and uh the creek you know down below me uh it's getting pretty high you know i haven't i've never seen it quite that high so it's mm -hmm. uh, a lot of water a lot of water's coming down but hey okay look we're all inside we're all safe that's all that counts okay so uh we're gonna jump into this today uh we've got some of the work that you guys sent in to uh, take a look at. And if we uh, go through all that too fast, then I've got some other things, uh, you know, that I, I want to talk about and show you. And uh, hopefully we'll get you guys, you know, pushing a little paint around or some color or something, you know. Uh, the last couple of weeks, it's, it's like I've, I've been ruminating on a lot of different things and, uh, so I've got a bunch of stuff that I really kind of want to play with and, and do. And, uh, you know, it's like way too much to do, not enough hours in the day. So, um, you know, hopefully you're having a similar situation to that. Anyway, let's take a look. Let's see what you guys send in. And we've got, uh, we've got those two drawings. And that's mainly what we have. Um, I think John may have sent in something other than that. Okay. All right, so uh, starting with, can everybody see the uh, drawing that Bernice did of the street scene at San Miguel? Yes. Okay, all right. So this one is Miss Bernice. This is Bernice, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is, this is her version or her rendition of the street scene that we all do. Now notice that she left out you know, the lady. The lady. Okay. And she was focused <laughs> on the architecture. Is she, is she here? I haven't heard from her. Usually I hear her voice. She is here, I think. Is she? Yeah. She's down there. Hey, Bernice, unmute yourself. Talk to us. We're talking about your girlfriend. She must be away from her computer for me yeah. or something. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm I'm clicking her unmute uh, button, but yeah, I don't know. So she'll kick in here in a minute, maybe. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at this real carefully, okay? So she, you know, she's just doing the street itself. Oh, I'm, I'm on, I'm on, I finally, I finally got myself unmuted. Yeah, yeah, we saw you, but yeah, we were trying to talk to you. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so what I was saying is, okay, this is basically a one-point perspective, and so you got that idea right, okay? 
Now, one, one thing you might want to think about is you have two sets of buildings there, one to the left, one to the right, okay? And the doorways, see the height of the doorways over on the <laughs> left-hand side of the building are going to be pretty similar to the ones on the right. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. From where now, I'm standing. So if, if the top of the door is down here on the left, then they're going to really be, you know, quite a bit shorter on the right. Um, mm -hmm. See, because you've got them going about halfway up, you know, from, from the top edge down to the foot. And, mm -hmm. you know, reality is they've got to be below that one half line. Uh, because they got, they got they got they got to be below what you know below half of the height of this wall you know unless, oh okay yeah unless this is just a one-story building but it's not it's actually you know two levels you know in this house okay. so, mm -hmm. so the doors are a little bit shorter on this side and so are the windows um okay. so again you know to try to get these to relate to each other you know they're going to have similar heights you know and, and placement of the windows and doors, you know. Okay. And so, you know, really, as you're doing stuff like that, kind of think about the scale of things, how big they need to be. And of course, as they get closer to us, they're going to get bigger. As they get further down the street, they're going to get smaller. So, mm -hmm. And we'll probably see that in some of the, in, in some of the other drawings coming up. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out to you is that, uh, you know, our eye level, you know, is really kind of about like right here at the top of this arch. Mm -hmm. That's about where our eye level was in the in the actual image. And we'll look at that in a minute. Um, and so if that's the case, right? So it's like, you know, the top of your doorways and everything are going to be above our eye level. Okay. So, you know, they're gonna have a, a vanishing point you know, moving back, you know, to around the spot right here. And so, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to, that, that'll help you set, you know, the height of your doors and make sure that they're kind of even with each other. Uh, so you can use it for that. Uh, but the other thing I want to point out to you Wait is- minute, I, 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 should, I, I should have gone by the top of the door that, that's at the end of, of, the, uh, of the street for, for my-, for my uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I anything that you could have found- um, yeah, anything that you could have found down here would have given you, you know, something to align that that angle up with. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know, whichever direction it was moving, okay? Okay. All right, but as it moves up and gets higher and higher above our eye level, you know, we get the top of the church, right? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, think about it this way. If, if we've got this church you know the steeple way up above us all right which what kind of uh what kind of curve is this going to make if it's above our eye level is it is it going to be doing this or is it going to be doing the opposite oh uh-huh i see what you mean. yeah you should look it up at it the, 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 the two sides are going to be coming down yeah right and yeah, this right here what you've drawn looks it kind of indicates that it's below our eye level and it's not it's up above right so mm -hmm. for the curve here kind of needs to go the other direction all right so just little things like that you know but you know you got you got the general intent and the general kind of scale of things you know pretty well and you know you you chose to leave out the figure right and mm -hmm. one of the things that the figure would have helped you do is kind of determine the scale of everything else because you know once you got her drawn in then you could look at her in comparison to the door and go okay is the door big enough or is it too small right and see so you could have you know measured from there so it gave it would have given you something to compare is all i'm saying right um and then we have your uh I'm not exactly sure where she's from, whether she's from India, Nepal, uh, somewhere in Southeast Asia, right? But she's, she, uh, she's from my pen, my pen and paper. 
right. Well, you're drawing it. <laughs> yes. yes. But the, 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 the image that we work from, I'm not quite sure what country she's from. So, yeah. I, she could be from India. She could be from Nepal, even Thailand, uh, you know, somewhere in Southeast Asia. But you got the pose, you know, you got that, that you know, arched feeling, you know, and, and her leg extended forward and her foot balanced under her head. So everything, you know, feels pretty solid. Even the- Her leg, leg, leg looks too big, doesn't it? Uh, the upper leg? Yeah. Not really. Not really, okay. Not really. Um, you know, this one might be a little bit too short, but not, not really. I mean, I'm kind of looking, you know, I mean, this leg does appear, you know, to be very large when, when we look at the reference on her. Um, so it's, it's really not that far off. It can maybe be a little bit smaller, but not by much. Um, but overall, I mean, you got, you got the movement. She looks like she's balanced. She's not getting ready to fall over. You got this arm <laughs> moving forward and, and the hand kind of coming out toward us. So you got a little bit of foreshortening there and that feels pretty good. So overall, you did a pretty nice drawing to her. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Um, in fact, let's look at her. There she is, see? And you were looking at the size of the leg, so. I guess if you, if you the, about the only thing that you're drawing is that maybe the thickness of this part of the leg. I think the length seems to be okay in your drawing. Oh, I, 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 I see what, what it is now. I, I, I make the, 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 the leg on, on, the, on the left too small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what you're saying. What you're, either this, yeah, either this could be a little bit bigger and maybe a, you know, a, a little bit longer. Or really kind of, I think right in here, could have been a little bit thinner mm -hmm. if you just took a little out of there. But hey, yeah. like I said, overall, I think you did really pretty well with that one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, one thing I, you know, just like the perspective, you know, on the church people, you know, what we were talking about here with the mm -hmm. direction of that curve as to whether it's above or below our eye level. Well, when you get to drawing figures and you get curved shapes, like for example, the, uh, the curve, you're moving around the leg, right? Or the curve moving around the arm here. Um, you kind of flatten those out a little bit and you could push, you could really make them a little bit rounder, see? And then that would, that would tell us that that leg has more form to it. So you kind of straighten that line out and kind of flatten it out where if you would have just really pushed that curve around there, it would have felt more round, okay? Oh, okay. It's, uh, you know, we've talked about this before, but it's like anything that you, anything that you see in the figure, if, if you think that there's a curve there, whatever you think you see, push it by about 15%, okay. so make it more, right? Because our brains have a tendency to want to flatten everything out. And uh, reality is that it's, it's got to have more of a curve to it, okay? So let's look at her actual one. So you see how round that is? Uh-huh. See how it moves around, you know? Same thing with your leg. It's really not a straight line. It's it's a curve. Mm -hmm. so, so if you if you see those curves, you know, again, push it. You know, make it a little bit more. Okay, it's it's not going to hurt anything in the drawing to exaggerate it just a little bit, and and make a more sort of definitive statement about it. All right, um, Eloise. Well, yes. Yeah, there she is. Okay. So this is Eloise's drawing of the same dancer. Okay. And you kind of did the same thing, you know, on the ellipses. You kind of flattened them out a little bit. 
Uh, you got a little more curve on some of them, but some of these get a little bit flat here. Um, okay. Have you ever taken a drawing class and had the instructor talking about drawing through the form? No. No? That's how we call. Okay. Um, I'm going to have to talk about that then. Uh, because, all right, when, when you've got a piece of clothing or a bracelet or a watch or a belt, you know, moving around a figure, you know, it's, it's like almost abstractly when you, when you draw that, it's like you can't stop at the edge of the figure. You got to keep moving just a little bit and kind of just make like a little bit of a hook there as though you're moving around to the back side. And you just you know leave that little extra indication in there, and it gives you just enough for your eye to pick it up and really make that feel rounded. You you following what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Okay, um, and you know if if you look at artists like Degas and uh, Thomas Eakins, any you know Sargent. You know, in any of the great portrait painters or, you know, figure painters, um, you know, when they come to those edges, you know, they'll, they'll just kind of leave that little bit of a hook, you know, as an, you know, in the line work, just, just to tell your brain, you know, the viewer's brain that, yep, no, that keeps going around. It doesn't just stop at that edge. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and it's it's a little visual sort of trick, you know, that a lot of uh, illustrators and people use. But it, again, you know, it just kind of reinforces that idea that this is a, you know, this shape is rounded and that it has volume. Okay, so it's like you could have just taken that line and just kind of hooked it back just a little bit there, and that would have moved right on around that leg. Okay. Um. And then we have your street scene, okay? And if, if you look at uh, the scale of the figure to the doors and things like that, you see then these doors and things begin to feel, you know, a little more proportional, you know? And so, you know, having, having the human figure in there actually helps kind of set up the scale for everything else. Um, you know, and all of your vanishing points, you know, seem to go back, you know, pretty much so to the right point, you know, which is really kind of right about in there. That's kind of our high level. Um, and her head is, you know, again, you know, right up at about her, our eye level as well. So, so everything, you know, does what it needs to do, you know, as far as moving back in space. Uh, your, your ellipse on the church, you know, the steeple area seem to move, you know, in the right direction. So yeah, you got you got all that put together really pretty nicely. So it's a, a good drawing of that. And thank you. How long did we take for that drawing? Was that forty five minutes? I think. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, for forty minutes. Yeah, I think it was like forty, forty five something. You know, and. You know, I, I threw that guy, you know, this particular image at you because it, it's, it's a lot to think about. <laughs> it really is. Um, and and I, I knew I was throwing you guys off into the deep water, but that was intentional because I really wanted you guys to have to sit and look and figure this out. Um, you know, even though it's kind of a one point perspective, you know, the size of the figure has to relate to the size of the building, yada, yada, yada. Um, you know, it's all got to kind of fit together. And so, um, you know, trying to get that, you know, so that it felt right was really kind of the challenge there. And, uh, and so here's your drawing and like, here's the actual image that we were working with. And, you know, the fact is, you know, you, you've got your figure a little bit on the large side, size in mm -hmm. comparison and scale to this, you know, but it's still in the drawing doesn't feel that far out you know so it still works you get the idea you know of you know our focal point which is really her and and you know all the context around her so overall you did you did good job so 
Um, and we're going to look at John. Okay, and uh, we're going to have to blow these up. Now, John, you did something kind of interesting. And I figured, yes. that, I figured that a few people were going to do this. Okay. So I was, I was ready for you. Um, okay. If, if you look, if you looked at Eloise's drawing and the reference and, and things, uh, what's the difference between your drawing and, and her drawing? Mine is more draftsman-like. Mine is more draftsman-like. More draftsman-like. Well, yes. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? Well, didn't get as far as she did. Well, no. Okay. Uh, what I'm, yeah, what I'm getting to is that where you placed the figure uh -huh. is you moved her much closer to us. You know, uh, in in the uh, in the picture plane. I mean, you know, reality was that she was back here, and that you know her foot was around about here, and the top of her head would have been you know maybe somewhere in here. So she would have been in this area. Uh, okay. You know, but by doing this, and there's something here. It's it's like it's like we're up above her. Say we're not at her eye level anymore, but we're mm -hmm. we're up above her, and um, and reality is, you know, what we were looking at, we were not. You know, she's kind of at our eye level. So you see what the difference is, and how, yes. yeah, right. and how and how these lines converge back here to this, you know, really single vanishing point, really about right here, you know. Like right there in that blue area and okay. uh, you know and that's you know that's kind of our vanishing point you know maybe just a little bit above her head but not by much you know certainly not way up here and um and in your drawing what happened was you see you've moved that vanishing point much higher yes yes i did yeah so so just be aware of the relationship, you know, between all the different elements. Now, we could be super tall. We could be up above her, you know, in a double-decker bus or something like that, you know. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, reality is we could, okay. And so does the perspective work with the figure that you have? Yeah, it does, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not what we were looking at, but you know, you, you have the basic ideas of, you know, all, all of these doors and things, you know, moving back to the same vanishing points and the same thing with the buildings. Um, you know, you probably could have made this angle a little bit higher and steeper. So, so that it kind of yeah. came off about the same point as this did. Because yeah. we're in the middle of the street, um, but you know, just think, just think more about that. You know, when you get into, uh, you know, doing, you know, perspective about where you are in relationship to any other figures or or things, you know, and are we up above things or at at that level or below? And that that will really determine, you know, how you see a lot of that stuff. Um, then we have our. Let me zoom out a little bit. Then you have our our dancer. Okay. Now, whoop. Okay. Um, the thing I want to point out with this is when you started out. I guess my question is, what what did you, what was the first mark that you made? When you started I did I did I started the uh, uh, the oval of the arm and leg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that that and then, I, then I intersected the skirt. <laughs> okay. And and that would have been a good move, you know, because yeah, you want to you want to find the relationship of how tall 
this part of the body is to how wide, right? Yeah. And to me, it seems like you're a little bit narrow. Uh, ah, okay. Yeah. If if you look at her, and I th and I pointed this out. Uh, if we measure really from the point of the, the front of the chest back to the knee, it was about equal. Okay. I think it was about equal or maybe just a little bit, a little bit wider than from say the bottom of the leg to the top of the wrist. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And just look at it. It's just a little bit wider. Yeah. Than that. Yeah. And then when I look at the proportions in your drawing, see, it's just the opposite. You've, you've got it much taller than wide. Okay? Yeah, I see that. Yeah. So really, you know, if, if this arm and the chest and things are curving down here, then the leg's probably coming back, you know, about that far. Right. See, so that would have opened that up a little bit. Um, and so again, you know, checking those overall proportions, you know, to like <laughs> simplifying this down into like big, simple shapes, you know, is a good way of getting your proportions correct first. And then, you know, where to put the chest or the back of the leg or, you know, the arm and the shoulder, because you'll have some kind of landmark, you know, to start from. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, then you, this is something that you've done in addition. And uh, this is your same drawing. You've just done more work on it, right? Correct. Right. Okay. And it seems like you made the figure smaller in this one. Or no, uh, I didn't change. No. You didn't? Okay. No. Oh, okay. She seems a little maybe bigger. Maybe yeah, it does seem bigger, right? Maybe because I just, uh, yeah. maybe the confines of the color I might have. Yeah. Yeah, she, yeah, she's, she doesn't quite feel as large here as she did. Uh, yeah, I can see, I can see it there, yeah. Yeah. But, um, okay. But again, you know, same thing's going on, you know, perspective-wise. But you're beginning to develop this a little bit more. And you're headed off in a good direction. Again, I would kind of think about, uh, you know, maybe changing the angle of this and making it a little bit steeper on this right. street. Um, yep. The buildings here feel a little bit smaller than the ones over here. Correct. Yeah. So this is this is all uh, watercolor pencil, which I'm sort of experimenting with as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So what you're doing is you're putting down the color and then you're taking a brush and water and then you're blending that. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. And then letting the paper dry and then drawing back into it. You know, to Correct. Yeah. And that's, that's a good technique. It's really pretty well. All right. So, uh, My original thought was I was going to make it more abstract with each. Each building just a block of color and mm -hmm. not put detail in. So what stopped you? <laughs> My mind is thinking in detail. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. All right. So so here's an idea. Wonder if you took a piece of paper and um, and I'm not looking at having you do a lot of busy work, but let's say that you took something that was half that size okay and yep. you, you redrew all that out and instead of putting any detail in you just put in box of color and made an abstract out of it mm -hmm. just as an exercise yeah and that way so you're forcing yourself to stay away from the detail Correct. Give that a shot. Okay. Yeah, try it. You might, it might help. Um, okay. And then we have Jackie. And uh, Jackie, talk to me. You there? I, I see you. 
I'm here. There we go. Okay. So you said that uh, you gave me this guy's name, Professor who? Greg Carr. Okay. So, so who is he? He is a professor who teaches at Howard University in D.C., where I'm, I'm from, mm -hmm. my home. And he um, teaches on online, YouTube, and they just started narrative, um, a behind-the-scenes school, a history. They, he teaches history. Mm. He's a, an attorney and mm. a professor, and he teaches um black history and uh, you know all kinds of history ancient history mm -hmm. he's very very smart mm -hmm. uh, jackie how, where, where do you find him on you you you, you uh youtube just key in dr craig greg carr g-r-e-g-g -G, and uh, hunter uh, dennis t-a-r-r yeah, C A R R. Okay, and Karen it. Hunter is the other professor. Okay. It was her idea to start the school. So it's a, a nationwide school, and they have over 11,000 students. And you get to meet the students, and mm. you learn so much from everybody in different, from different countries. Oh, okay. 11,000. I like that. Yeah, this is so it's it's awesome. So I paid ninety nine dollars to go into the back room into narrative, and he discusses and goes down all these rabbit holes a lot deeper. Okay. Yeah. So not not ninety nine dollars per year. Ninety nine dollars per quarter. For the year. Okay. Yeah, that's just you know I joined when they first started. Okay. So, yeah. So they haven't gone up yet. All right. So now this is a, this is an online learning course through Howard University. Is that correct? Uh, they started their own. They are jailbreaking the universities because they are not teaching us what we need to know in Black history mm -hmm. in the universities or in the school system. So they are jailbreaking it, and they. Are doing a, 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 I L -L -L. Yeah, yeah, that's good because they're trying to stop that completely. Yeah, they want to stop it, but we got it going on. We, yeah, and, and and it's good to support them. Yes. You just, oh, it's awesome. They're really growing okay. fast. Yeah. Jenny, could you put that information in the chat box so you can have it? All you have to do is just go on YouTube and just put in. Dr. Craig Carr. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Craig Carr. Okay. Uh -huh. Craig or Greg? G R E G G. Greg. Greg. Greg Carr. C A R. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah, because it was it was interesting because you 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 sent me the image and then you know, basically said you know well you know I did this drawing of this. Yeah. Book. He's got us reading so many books. I mean, I have a library now that's really growing. I have over um, 150 books I have to read. Oh, wow. Uh, I so love to read, too. Now you, now you all know. the information you need, the books you need now, to read. Yeah. Now, you know, you know it's, it's, a, it's a funny thing. When I was younger, I would say, in my adult years, 18 to 50, say, I, I, I would read so many books, I'd be, I'd be trying to read five at a time, I'd be reading some of them from back to front. But as I got older, I don't know whether it's my eyes or what, I, I don't read like that. Uh, yeah. It, it's hard for me to read a whole book. I said, what happened? Because I, I read five or six books at a time, you know? Yeah. yeah. Mm. With well, my focus, it's hard too, but I still do it. I, I do it as much as I can. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I've got so many books. Yeah, that's so you gotta stay with it. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a great habit, you know, to build up. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, you know, kind of go through that phase where maybe when you're younger, like a young, you know, like a teenager to young adult, you may do a lot of reading, and then you get caught up in life and you get kids and stuff like that. And, right, you stop reading. Yeah, a lot of that stuff goes away, and then as you get older. It's nice if you can kind of rekindle that habit and, and keep reading. Uh, it's 
you know, yeah. there's a lot of information out there in the world. There really, really is. And and uh, he went through he went through the artists uh, yesterday on uh, Saturday because they come on Saturday on every Saturday evening. Mm -hmm. And in narrative, you can go anytime. I go at two in the morning if I'm awake. I I can go. But that book, Loot, L-O-O-T, mm -hmm. that's one of the books about the looting of the artifacts from you mean Africa. From, like Africa yeah. and, and different it, In yep. the museums, yeah. yeah. He goes oh, that's all interesting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's, you know, that, that's get that. a, a fascinating subject all into itself. Um, and interestingly enough, we've talked a little bit about it, um, in a lot of cases, you know, the United Nations uh, and a lot of the countries themselves are beginning to bring lawsuits against different institutions like museums, like in England, things like that, that have these enormous collections of cultural artifacts that they appropriated when these countries were colonies. And, uh, you know, the, even the United States, you know, our country is, is guilty of that as well. Um, you know, we have museums that are chock full of artifacts and things that were, those artifacts were, were collected um, in dubious ways. Um, they weren't collected, they were stolen. Well, you know, we're, we're trying Avery. to, yeah, we're trying. Yeah, absolutely. The well, education of the African American. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and it, it's happened everywhere. It's happened with you know Native American tribes in this country. It happened. As, as you see, it happened in Afghanistan right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Well, and you know, I mean, that, all that history. That that gets into a whole other discussion, but you know, um, we lose. You know, we lose so much art history and just general history um, in war zones, uh, yeah. you know, because of the destruction of architecture and archaeological sites, things like that. It's, it's mm -hmm. a shame. It really is. But, you know, what, what can anyway, you they've done, they're up to number 75 classes. They've done 75 classes since they yeah. started. Yeah. 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 Okay, so now and Jackie, that that ninety dollars covers what a month? Uh, ninety nine dollars a year. Oh wow! Okay, okay. Uh, you know, there's, um, and I think I've mentioned this to you. Um, you know, there's a lot of online subscriptions that you can take uh, for like learning in certain areas, um, and there's, I mean, you know, there's different sites. Uh, like, for example, um, and I'm not promoting this one in particular, but, but I've used it before, and it's called Skillshare. And you can learn almost anything on that. S-K-I-L-S-H-A-R-E? Yeah, well, yeah. S-K-I-L-L, share, S-H-A-R-E. Oh, but 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 the first four letters are S K I L, aren't they? No, S K I skill, S K I L L, skill chair. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know why. I thought, yeah, I'm thinking of something else. I thought it was spelled differently. Well, um, I'll have to check that. But yeah, the name of the site is. Yeah. Here. But again, you know, they have all kinds of classes. I mean, right. everything from so chemistry the, and physics and you know to like how to do stuff. You know, right. in art class, you know. Oh yeah, everything. Yeah, like and particularly uh, like in design, graphic design, stuff like that. So there's a lot of opportunities out there, you know, for people if you want to, if you want to okay. improve certain areas or, or you have certain interests, um, you know, you can always take, you know, online classes, uh, and most of them are really pretty reasonable. You know, and it's just a like a yearly subscription. So, yeah, but this is special because this is giving us what we were never taught. Absolutely. The whole time we went to school right. and to college. Yeah. In university. 
we never learned all of this stuff. And so a lot of the information is suppressed too. So it's yeah. good to have. Uh, yeah. They uh, give it. They give it. That will, it, you know, expose or tell, teach about a lot of things that have been mysteriously missing from yeah. history. Yeah. Well, maybe Absolutely. not. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of stuff that doesn't get discussed. Or so. And, you know, word of mouth helps a lot too, Jackie. I'm glad that you mentioned this. Mm -hmm. So. Let's let's talk about your artwork. Okay, so you you've done a drawing, and uh, is this color pencil? I mean, yeah, color pencils and and pen, like a looks like maybe ballpoint pen or some kind of uh, the, the gel. Yeah, kind of like gel pen. Yeah. Okay, and you did the original drawing. Is is that with like a graphite pencil or is that a color pencil as well? Just color pencils. One, of, some of them have wax in them. They don't go on as easy. The ones with the wax. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it, just color what? pencils that they had us using at the senior center. Kim had, Kim Wright had us using her c color pencils. Okay. It, is this is, is this canvas ten by twenty? It looks like it's awfully long compared to its, its width. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, it's just out of my art book, a little short page. Mm -hmm. short oh, because it looks long. Mm. <laughs> That's all. It's, yeah, it's. A, no, it looks wide, not long. It looks wide. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a landscape format. Did you did you 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 see the original picture of him that I sent? No. That didn't come. That didn't come through. My inspiration. Okay. Okay. No, I okay. just got the uh, I just got the drawing. Hmm. Okay. This year looks like ten by twenty. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, it's it's a little more of a horizontal landscape format. Um, mm -hmm. But the nice thing is, if you want to start talking about you know the actual artwork, okay, if you look at the composition of it, it's very nice that you don't have him dead center in the page. That you've got to move yeah. a little yeah. bit off to the right, um, and then. You, yeah, the way, that's the way he was sitting. Okay. And then the way that you've laid out your books and your shelves and the different angles so that, you know, it the drawing doesn't look flat. He's got some form in there and some, mm -hmm. some volume and some shape, which is nice. Um, so overall, I mean, you did a nice job, you know, it's a drawing. Uh, the one thing I would encourage you to do, now you're putting in a lot of color back here, right? Uh, behind him, and the thing I would I would think a little bit about is the focal point would really be him, correct? The photo, the what? The focal point, the of your drawing, the thing that you want everybody to see, uh huh, is really him, right? Right. Which means that to get to get your eye to focus on him you might need more contrast on him than you do in the background, okay? Okay. So you've got a couple of choices because right now they're about kind of equal, right? You know, and I, I understand, you know, you wanted to have a lot of the book titles and things like that in there, but they still, if we're kind of talking about him being the focal point and not the books, then we need to, again, keep the contrast and focus on him, which means one of the ways that you might go about doing that at this point, since you have all the color and stuff on the books back there, is if you took a, if you had a white pencil, okay, colored pencil. I did, but it didn't show up on his shirt. Those circles are white, uh -huh. but it doesn't show up. Okay. But white. Here, hang on. Okay. You know, my suggestion is that you take that white color pencil and just very, you know, you don't, you don't want to get rid of any of this stuff, but what you want to do is you want to begin to just fade it back a little bit. See, by going over it with that white, you're going to knock some of that color down. And again, you know, as this gets a little bit softer, mm -hmm. he's going to come forward. Okay. Oh, okay. See, so that's a way of pushing you know, some of this stuff back here, back into the background, 
and letting his figure move forward, right? Oh, all right. Yeah. Now, you know, you could do the same thing with a darker colored pencil as well and just put an overall kind of grayish tone back here. Mm -hmm. And that would, again, fade that back a little bit. But I, I would probably do the white. You know, oh. kind of soften it back rather than dark because he's already got a very dark colored shirt, and mm -hmm. you know, and and if you fade this back, you know, he's a darker value or he will be a darker value overall, and mm -hmm. again, that's going to give you that contrast, you know, between the two areas of your drawing. Okay. Okay. So let's see. We got Susan Adair. Uh, I'm right. here. Yeah. Okay. I'll so, try to resend that, although. Uh, yes, you did. You did resend it. And it actually <laughs> is much better than the first set that we got because we could actually one. see what's going on. These were outside. So, um, yeah, yeah I, I took them outside. But. Yeah. And so you see the contrast in the drawing? is much better and we can actually see everything. Um, the ones that you've taken before were kind of blurry and, and very, it's like they were under like a really bright light and it just kind of washed everything out. So, okay, and I guess it was probably under a bright light when I yeah. did that, but um, yeah. Yeah, but this is, this is really much better. So we can kind of see what's going on here. Um, and, you know, we've, we've talked about the composition and, you know, the scale and proportion of everybody and, um, you know, before. And again, you know, all the same things apply. But, you know, uh, overall, I mean, it, it's a really nice drawing. You get the concept and the idea that they're outside, that, you know, they're sitting on these benches and you've got the model over there that everybody's focused on. And you've even included, you know, the artwork you know, on the canvases and things. So, you know, they're actually sort of in the process of, of drawing and painting her. So, um, now, are you using colored pencil here or is, or is this yeah. like a wet medium? Color pencil, color pencil, yeah. Okay, because some of this stuff looks almost kind of watercolory back here, you know? No, it's, it's all the same thing, <laughs> it's all water. I mean, it's all color pencil. Yeah, so it's all dry, and it's it's yeah, yeah it's not like watercolor pencils or things that you wet. Okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then we have your bear. Okay. And again, we can see him much better this time. And <laughs> okay. yeah, and again, you know, it's the same same thing. So you know, trying to build up some values and separate the bear away from the background. You know, right now they're kind of too much the same. Um, and so it's like, you know, how do you push that background back and let the bear come forward? And so it's all a matter of uh, contrast. And right now, you know, you have more contrast right in this area. And so your eye does go to the focal point and you get to see that. Um, but when you get back here, you know, the overall shape of the bear doesn't really separate out away from, you know, the trees and things behind him. And so, you know, finding some way of, of pushing those trees back and letting the bear come forward would be helpful. Uh, you got the barn, kind of the same thing. You know, it's, it's uh, you know, you're seeing the shapes and kind of the movement of the trees, which are all very nice and all. It's, it's trying to build up values, light, middle, and dark, right? And so, you know, okay. building up some strong darks, having some very lights, and then, you know, for the most part, your drawing is overall mid-tone, you know? And so there's just not that contrast in there, but, you know, pushing a little contrast in there would help, okay? Okay, thank you. Then we got, we're not done with you yet, we got to look at your uh, your dancer here, okay? Um, yeah. Uh -oh. And and you know we were talking, you know, when we looked at uh, Eloise's drawing, John's, and uh, Bernice's, you know, again, you know, trying to get that relationship correct. And your skills, 
you know, uh, better, you know, not, not quite as vertical and, and narrow. Uh, I would say I, I had a hard I had a hard time with both of these drawings. They were like yeah. I, I just I, I felt like I was missing something in both of both of them. That, um, yeah, but overall, I mean, you got you got the intent, and you know your proportions are really not all that bad. You know, in the figure and the movement, you you've got most of that down pretty well. Um, you know, still, you know, little things like. Yeah, these could be more curved to say that that arm is round. And we've talked about things like that today. And, you know, it's a, it's a common, you know, it's a common thing with everybody. Um, you know, to, you, you look and you kind of put down a mark. And it's just trying to get everybody to slow down and kind of think through what am I really trying to say here, which is that that leg is round or the arm is round. And, you know, push those curves a little bit more exaggerated. Um, and then we got your lady in uh, on the street in San Miguel, and uh, you know it kind of you know it's it's been kind of a common problem today. You know the the size of the figure in relationship to the size of the building, and uh -huh. I think you got the idea that this is a one point perspective and everything's kind of moving back, but these buildings look tiny in comparison to her and so okay. if if rather than this angle being you know pretty much so almost level if you had angled it upward a these buildings would feel like they're coming toward us more and the size of them in relationship to the figure would have been you know more you know more what we would have expected Okay, and the same thing on this side. See, I spent a lot of time erasing. This. I mean, it was. Uh, I, I kept thinking, well, it's, it's, it's they're not going in the direction that they're supposed. To, it just just didn't seem like anything was going in the right direction either. Yeah. But um, I just had trouble trying to get it to line up. I, I don't know. So, and and uh, here, let me just stop for a moment. Um, we'll go back to this. Okay. You know, anytime when you're doing uh, a drawing that involves perspective, okay, and you've got architecture and angles and stuff like that, or even really with the figure, uh, you can do the same thing. You know, if you're using a brush or a pencil or, or anything else, just take your arm, you know, and hold, hold the pencil up and match the angle you know, that you're trying to match, and then just, you know, drop it back down in front of your pad. And that gives you an idea of how steep that angle is. And so it's a way of sort of measuring that. And, it, you know, it's not going to give you an exact, but it's going to, it's going to kind of cement in your brain that, you know, oh, okay, yeah, I need an angle, you know, that's probably a lot steeper than, you know, what I would have initially. Okay. And I'm going to mention until you said something about the girl, you know, the dancer, mm -hmm. have the body being kind of rounded. Mm -hmm. I didn't notice that when yeah. I was drawing it. I mean, it was, um, so um, I, I guess I don't have the right um, feeling about looking at, at things that I'm supposed to. to yeah, it, take, it takes a while to learn stuff like that. And, you know, the idea and anything, um, I don't know how you you used to draw quite a bit. Didn't you? I used to do what? You used to draw quite a bit, didn't you? I did in in high school and college. Right. But when I when I got married and started yeah. a family and started yeah. working, yeah, I went years. Ago. So um, right. yeah, okay. now I've started back up since retiring, but in, right in 2019. Okay. But. So if if you if you can kind of remember back you know, when you first started drawing and taking classes and things, even in high school and college, uh, they probably mentioned to you about, you know, anything that you look at, whether you're looking at a figure or you're looking at a landscape or you're looking at a, like a architecture or a building, you know, things can be abstracted. See, abstraction only means to simplify. You know, like when you, when you look at, say, a building, 
All right. It's, it's basically has a certain amount of height and a certain width to it, right? And so, you know, if you could break that down into like a really simple shape, it might be a rectangle is all you see, right? Uh, you know, and so, you know, finding those simple shapes, you know, simplifying things, like with that girl, the dancer, you know, an oval, uh -huh. you know, an oval or a circle, you know, again, was kind of like the upper part of her body. And then it was kind of like a triangle from the bottom, right? So you could just break it down into like simple, well, here, let's go back a little bit. You know, okay. really simple shapes. Sorry. Um, you know, really simple shapes. And, you know, then you can kind of, you know, massage it from there. But, you know, just finding, you know, just some, something to start with uh, to get the overall proportions of things is oftentimes very helpful. All right, so when we look at her, okay. All right, can everybody see her? Yeah. 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 All right. So if, if, yes. you look, if you look at the upper part of her body, right, it's, you, you can almost make a circle, right? Yeah. And then the bottom part, you see, if you go straight down the leg to the foot, right, and then back to that back knee, it's kind of a big triangle in there, right? Yeah. Okay. And I, I, don't, I didn't notice things. I, I guess when I'm looking at something, though, I don't, it doesn't jump out at me like that. I just... Um, because I, I really had a hard time with her um, body area, mm -hmm. trying to um, get get the um, right proportions inside of that. It was just, right. um, and I wound up starting with the foot that she's standing on when I started drawing it. And so maybe I should have started a little higher and done, um, done, done seen that circle and, and mm -hmm. started from there or something. Yeah. Well, the, you know, I guess the point I want to make to you is that, you know, even though maybe you didn't see that this time, you know, what, what I would recommend is anytime that you begin to do a drawing or something, uh, and, you know, you're just drawing things on your own, whether it's, a, you know, something around the house or a face or anything else, start trying to think of it, you know, as if I had to simplify that down to the simplest shape that I could, what would that be? Would it be a square? Would it be a circle? Would it be an oval? Would it be kind of like an egg shape? Um, would it be a triangle? Um, you know, and you know, not necessarily the whole thing, but you know, maybe part of it. Like, you know, like in this case, you know, we were kind of breaking, you know, or I recommend that you kind of break the upper part of the body into like a circle or an oval. And then the bottom part kind of into a triangle. So you know, put the two together. Um, but start start trying to look for you know like really simple basic geometric shape, you know, that you could lightly sketch on your paper to begin to get the relationships, the size relationships working. You know, you know I'm, I'm going to mention something else just out of the blue. When, when I was in high school and college, um, I could do algebra and uh -huh. trigonometry and things like yeah. that, but I couldn't do geometry. So, so those those figures with geometry were just, <laughs> you know, so I, I don't know if I have kind of, I, I have to kind of get my mind maybe attributed to, to shapes a little bit better than, than they yeah. actually are. So, yeah. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you could do trigonometry without geometry. Well, okay. That, am I saying the right thing? I, um, yeah. Well, I mean, the right I, I, I uh, kind of had a similar problem, but just kind of re reverse. It's like when I went to high school, right. I took algebra uh -huh. one and it, it was like, I was lost. I mean, I was just like, <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know, A equals, you know. But that's what I said with geometry. I, I just said. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you see, that. after I took algebra one, and and that was that was like a total. I almost I almost failed that class. That was so bad at it. 
And then yeah, and right, I'm a <laughs> yeah. then the next then the next class I took was geometry. And all of a sudden, all those equations made visual sense to me. And I got it. And <laughs> so that made that made algebra two much easier. And then when I took, you know, calculus and, and trig after that. Again, uh, you know, when I'm thinking calculus instead of trick, yeah, I, I, yeah. Uh, calculus I was very good in. Okay. Yeah, when, so. when I began to, you know, take those upper level math classes, being able to visually abstract those problems, that was the only thing that saved me, <laughs> you know, because it's like, okay, yeah, just think of it as, you know, like a three dimensional order or, or space, you know, distances, things like that. And, and I could get it, but other than that, it was just, it was just like, it was like, you know, I mean, I had, had no way of grasping, you know, uh, in algebra one, what, what they were talking about. It was just, it was just way out there for me. So, so I, <laughs> okay. believe me, I've been there. I know. <laughs> you know? So, um, anyhow, so let's go back and, uh, all right. So we, we were talking about your, your lovely dancing lady here. Okay. And so, you know, I mean, a lot of that, you know, you're, you're picking it up, you're getting it. It's just, you know, over time, the more drawing you do, you know, the better you'll get at, you know, getting those proportions and things. And there's, there's a few things to pick up along the way, but again, you know, just trying to simplify and abstract things into simple shapes sometimes is, is sometimes the best way of, you know, really figuring out those proportions. Okay. Um, that's my case. Thanks for, for that. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, okay. We talked about the, the street scene. Okay. So guess who we're going to pick on next? Wanda. Wanda? Uh-oh, it's my turn. Okay. It's your turn. <laughs> Finally, at last. Wanda. Yes. Okay. And actually, uh, let's see. I think I wanted to do something here. Yeah, okay, I wanted, I, I, I didn't want to start with this. I wanted to start with this. Okay. Because this is your drawing. Okay. Yes, yes. All right. Now, where is this drawing from, may I ask? Uh, I was going through a magazine and saw it. I said, oh, let me try that. And okay. just, it's not exactly like the picture was up in the magazine. I just added what I wanted in there. Okay. All right. And, and that's fine, you know, that's, that's what making art is all about, is, you know, kind of expressing your own feelings about things. So, <clears throat> I have a question for you, okay. and, and it's not that anything is right or wrong about it, but to me, you know, when I look at your drawing, it seems like the whole, whole landmass is actually sort of tipped up at a diagonal, like we're looking at it with our head tip to the side or something. So mm -hmm. the, you know, it, it, it sort of captures your interest because it kind of feels like it's a little out of balance, you know, or a little, little tip, you know, like the horizon line is doing this, you know. Do you get that feeling? Because I was drawing it flat on the table and not up, sitting up, you know, flat yeah. on the table. Okay, well, you know, it worked out for you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not a bad thing, you know. It's not a bad thing because I mean, it does, you know, it does stop, you know, the viewer to really look at that and go, okay, so what's going on? Because it does feel like it's a little bit tip. Um, okay. And so it, it kind of plays with your 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 sense of perception and and, and space there. But you've taken that, okay, from the drawing. And then you've begun to go further on it and lay in color. And you made a comment to me that you weren't happy with something. Uh, and I guess, what, yeah, what is I, I, I like the one in black and white better than the one in color. Uh-huh. But why is that? Uh, I, I guess the one in the pencil was just uh, more real looking to me. This one, I don't know, I just had too much going on here. I don't know how to really do water and skies and stuff. So, yeah, I'm just experimenting, see okay. how it'll come out and how it looks. Okay. 
Well, I, I have can, one. Can you, share, can you share the pencil one again? Just yeah. Here. I have one word to convey to you. Okay. And the okay. difference between the two is value. Yeah. Values, right? Now, I don't mean okay. you know, how much it's worth or anything. Right? You know what I mean? Right. How light. Yes. Yes. Okay. You see, in the drawing, you've got a nice sense of value, of contrast, right? Uh, you know, a lot of the things down here in the lower part of the land mass, the trees, things like that, you know, get pretty dark. Okay. And then as you move back to the back, they seem to get a little bit lighter, right? And then the sky yes. is even lighter. And so you've got like a very light area for the sky and the water. You've got, you would call it maybe a middle light for your background. And then you've got everything from about a middle value to a dark, you know, for your trees and things, right? And so you've got a nice separation of value and it makes some kind of sense, right? When you go to adding color to it, you've lost that contrast. Okay. See, because you've got this big dark shape up in here in the sky uh, yes. that you didn't have in your original drawing. And so right. we kind of wonder what that is. And then the value of the sky is actually, if you squint your eye down, darker than this hillside for land mass here. See? So you've reversed the values and made the sky much darker, the land mass much lighter. And then these, which used to be very, very dark and strong, are now not really all that much darker than some of the values you have in your sky. And so you've lost that contrast in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it does, it does. Okay, so, you know, as, and you're using like markers, right? We're using watercolor pens, yes. Yeah, watercolor pens, okay. So here's the thing, you know, I don't know how many pens you have or the variety of pens you have. And like, you know, if I were gonna try to do something uh, and create like a landscape or an image or something like that, you got a couple different choices. Um, either have like five or six different blues and you know, from a, something that's very pale and very light to something that's much darker. And then the same thing in just about every other color, you know, have a range of value, uh, not just color, but you know, if you have browns, a light brown, a medium brown, a dark brown. You know, same thing with red, a light red, kind of pink, right? or very pale pink to like a very dark red um, in, in each of those colors. And that way, you're not just putting color down, you're also putting color and value, okay? okay. It's a red, but it needs to be a light red, you know? And, and, you know, that will help you kind of maintain that value structure that you had in your drawing and, uh, you know, and things will begin to look, you know, a little more, you know, I guess you want to call it realistic, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now, one of the other options, it, let's say that you don't have anything but this blue pin right there. You don't have anything else. Well, okay. Do you have to make the sky blue? No, you don't. <laughs> right. Yeah, you don't really have to. You could leave it white. Uh, the other thing that you could do is rather than make, like, try to fill it in and make it solid, what would happen mm -hmm. if you just made, like, little dots of blue? You know, oh, right there. okay. Yeah. Right. Or just, like, you know, an occasional thin line mm -hmm. right, of blue. When you back up away from it, you know, that's just because you have that little bit of blue in there, it's going to kind of, kind of fill in. Uh, you know, that's the way that the impressionist would use color. You know, they wouldn't necessarily change the value so much as it was how much, how much blue, how much white, how much yellow, green, right? And the more white against those colors they had, you know, the paler the color looked, right? When, the, when they had more dark colors together, you know, the value changed and it became darker. Um, 
Yeah. So, so there's a lot of different ways that you can approach that. You know? Okay. And, and you don't have to fill everything in as a solid poem. <laughs> right. Okay. I think I have a tendency doing it, trying to fill everything in. Okay. Yeah. Well, and you know, you, you've got a perfect example, like right here, the hillside, right? So you mm -hmm. use the brown pen. It's probably not much different than the brown pen that you used up in here, right? But here, I see you left a lot of white showing through. And so you, it's still brown, but it's much lighter here than it is at the top, right? Or down right. here. Mm -hmm. Because it's not filled in as solidly. So, see, using the white of the paper and leaving some of that can help us kind of create that illusion of value sometimes. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Um, looking at, this is your uh, girl walking down the street in San Miguel. Okay? Yeah. I came out of the class really late. So I was trying to put down as much as I thought we were supposed to put down as much as we could in 15 minutes. Yeah, well, uh, but yeah. that wasn't the instruction. Well, no, no. we, you know, most people had about 40 to 45 minutes to do this, and uh, and that's you know, hey, you worked with the time you had. But here's the thing I want to point out is that overall you got the general concept of the image, which is you've got this girl and proportionally scale wise you know she's pretty close you know kind of believable you know maybe could be a little bit smaller in comparison to the doors but the other thing is and, and the only thing that i'd say she really kind of missed out on you know you've got the angles of the bottom edges of the buildings moving forward but with the top you kind of flattened them out and they were probably you know a little steeper than you've got them and that would have made the building a little taller on each side and, and probably put her at about the right proportion of scales, you know, and it would have given you more room to sort of get the upper story of windows and stuff up here that we saw and the same thing up in here. Um, you know, and, and you wouldn't have had to try to squeeze them in, you know, quite so much. So really, I mean, the only, only major thing was really this this angle right in here that I would change in that drawing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, the uh, lady dancer we kind of talked about her a couple of times. Now, one of the things that that you did, um, you know, you got this shape wrapping around, and again, it's like the proportion, you know, the width versus the height, and it seems like you've got it taller than you do wide. And in, you know, in reality, she was much wider across here. And in this case, the other thing I want to point out is where is the foot in relationship to the head? And the fact is that it doesn't really feel like it's under her head. It would be back here. So, um, and so it's a little bit out of balance. So it's kind of like she could fall over this way because she doesn't have enough support underneath her, right? Um, I see, okay. Yeah. The other thing is, if you would have made this wider, you could have moved this with, you know, the whole upper part of her body up here, and then it would have fallen under her head, and then you would have had that width in there as well. Okay? Okay, mm-hmm. So it's, it's like the relationship of where things are, you know, is kind of important. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the figures kind of feel awkward, like they're gonna fall over or something like that. So, um, yeah, I see. yeah. And so here's something that you sent in. And uh, so we've got this silhouetted head of, it looks like if I had to make a guess, you know, an African figure, right female and yes. so what inspired this tell us all about this well i was uh experimenting with uh, my pens again the different colors and i wanted to do something that showed different lines and designs mm -hmm. and so i just liked the way that things flowed showed motion to me mm -hmm. so uh, that's what i liked about it yeah now 
Yeah. Now, is this done? What kind of paper is this done on? Can I ask? Uh, this is done on a canvas. Oh, on a canvas, actually. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because I was looking at uh, it. One of the, the hard canvases, not the soft. Oh, like a hard canvas board? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because I was looking at the texture down in here. I was like, okay. Huh. I wonder what that is. Um, but the way that you use the pen and, you know, basically you gave yourself away here because I, I know now that you have a light blue pen. I can see. I do. Yes. <laughs> so, you, <laughs> yes. so you see, you can pick colors and values, you know, out of that. Okay. So just be aware of that. But the way that you're using the pen and like how you wanted to fill this area in, you know, fairly solid. And you were very careful, you know, and you made a series of lines and followed that so that you fill that whole area in fairly solid. But at the same time, you know, your pin strokes sort of give some form and some motion to it. See? Yeah. Because your pins vary, you know, both in pressure and, you know, and, and how dark, um, you know, the pin got as it moved across the surface. And it worked really pretty well because, you know, otherwise if you'd fill that in just perfectly black and really even, you know, that figure would have looked very flat. But this way, okay. she actually has some form to her, you know, and it worked really pretty nicely you know, with what you did there. You know, also with laying in the color, you know, in, um, you know, in her scarf or hat up here. So everything worked pretty nicely. It's, it's nice colors and things, nice combination, nice combination of value contrast, you know, with the strong dark against, you know, a generally lighter background. And then the brightness of the colors, you know, in the fabrics and pattern, you know, all really kind of interesting, you know, really nicely done. So. Thank you. Good job. And then of course I saved my favorite for last. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah. And so, again, you know, um, and Susan, is Susan a day or Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, I still have. Okay. So take a look at these figures, if you will. So you see how she just sort of simplified the shape of the dress? See, it's just yeah. shape, you know. Same thing for the arm and, you know, so it's breaking it down into simple shapes. Um, and that's kind of what I'm talking about. You know, it's just look for, it's, it's kind of like you got to, you got to get past seeing all the details and all the little nuances. There's a time for that, right? But it's usually not the very first thing you do. It's usually the last thing you do. Uh, after you've figured out all the proportions and general shapes and how things fit together. So, you know. I also the, like the way she did it with the hats too. Those are uh -huh. the, the hats. But those yeah. are umbrellas. umbrellas. Those are umbrellas. Yeah, the umbrellas mm -hmm. up here. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, umbrellas. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, Wanda. I mean, again, you know, really nice simplification of form. It's kind of abstract, but you know, representational at the same time. Um, the only thing I would mention about this, and I don't know if you're finished with it or not, is uh, where you've got this red kind of transitioning into the yellow. Yes. right in here yeah. somehow softening that so that it doesn't just stop you okay. know but you know maybe it goes from a darker red to a pink to like an orange to a yellow thing okay you know and again you know maybe in here if, if there's any way of softening that and it may just be a matter of taking your yellow marker and mm -hmm. and working back into this and blurring that edge up a little bit Okay. Um, okay. When, when you use those markers, and you use one over another, do they sort of yes the color underneath so you can blend a little bit? Uh, I do. I I just purchased a blender, so um, I'll I'll do that with this. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully, I can do it. It, it should. It's watercolor, so I should be able to do it uh, now. You know. Uh huh. Yeah. So it's a water-based ink. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Yeah. It should. Yeah, probably, you know, as long as it's not like a Sharpie or kind of like a No, one. no, no, it's, it's, these are watercolors. Yeah, you should be able to move it around a little bit then. Okay. okay. But yeah, I mean, other than that, I mean, I, I wouldn't 
change really anything else. I would just kind of soften, you know, some of this back in here. Um, and, and like here, don't stop the red there. Let it kind of move again. One out some more. Off. Okay. Yeah. So that it doesn't end right at that point right there. Okay. All right. I can bring that over. Very pretty, Wanda. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so guess what? That's about it. That's all we got. Um, all right. Yeah. Uh, this is this is my dancing lady. So. Oh, very nice. Yeah, and uh, you know I basically just did the class. Didn't do any but again, you know I'm working on that gray paper, and I'm using a white and a sepia colored uh, color pencil. And so that gives me the ability to, you know, put in some value, you know, light and dark. And, uh, and then this was my version of the street scene. Okay. So, again, you know, just... Is, is, is your white kind of metallic? Uh-uh. No, it's just a, it's just a white prismacolor. Oh, it just looks that way. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, nothing metallic about it. Just, you know. Just a white and a brown pencil on a gray paper. And that was that was about it. Okay. Now you know you know and looking at this building now and you're talking about the top of her head and the top in the window and the door that's in the background. Mm -hmm. And so that 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 gives me an idea where I should have started on this one. But mm -hmm. if I have another uh drawing like this to do, mm -hmm. I don't I don't really know how to start to make everything proportional. Okay. Well, the very first, know if that's all you yeah. Well, the very first thing you want to do on any kind of drawing that involves space, right? Depth, you know, that has architecture or something like that, is find your eye level. You know. Okay. Yeah. Find your eye level first, and then where are things, you know, in relationship to that? You know, is the top of the building above your eye level or below it? You know, and if it's above it, then it's going to be somewhere up here, and you got to find that angle. You know, if the but, bottom but, building is below your eye level, then you got to find the angle down here. But but you, but you know, if if I'm outside looking at uh, something, I know where my eye level is. But I'm looking at a drawing on a piece of paper. You know, I I can look at it from the top, look at it from the bottom, look at it from the side. But I, I don't. I I have no idea what my eye level is when when I'm not looking at the thing in actuality. Right. Well, if you look at a photograph, you can still tell where your eye level is. Okay. Like, for example. You can? Yeah, sure. Here, let's go back to that image. Okay. All right. So if we look at that image, and this is the image that we drew, right? Okay. So where would you think our eye level is on this, Bernice? I thought it was at, that, at the little pink thing above her head. The little pink I, thing? The, the little pink flowers, yeah. That, that's, what I thought the, I, that's what I thought the eye level was. You mean up here? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It seemed like the eye level was where she's at. Well, yeah, it's kind of, kind of maybe just a little bit above her head, okay? It's kind of mm -hmm. what it is. Really kind of everything goes back to about this point. And so from there, you know, you can begin to, you know, find those lines that radiate out. Or you can just follow these back. No, they're not straight. They're wobbly, you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it, the ground's not perfectly level and it's actually kind of hitting up hill. But if you begin to, you know, kind of follow any one of these angles back, say, it kind of all ends up right about in there. Okay. Okay. And so, you know, that's your vanishing point, really right about where the cursor is. Okay. And so all those lines, you know, begin to radiate out you know, from there. Okay. Okay. So that is our eye level. That's where we're at. See, all the eye level tells you is where you're at in relationship to everything else. So we're slightly above her, right? We're slightly mm -hmm. taller than her, but not by much. Okay. Pretty similar, right? And that the tops of the building are way up above our eye level. The bottoms of the buildings are fairly far below our eye level, okay? And about the only horizontal lines moving across the page are this, the top of this edge of this building right here, okay? Mm -hmm. And then kind of the bottom of the fountain, 
right? Right here. Those are really the only things moving, you know, perfectly horizontally across the page. Nothing else really is. Well, this this portion of the church right here, the line here, the line there, and the line there. Those are all. Oh, I, I, I see those angles now. I didn't see them before, but I see those angles now too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because my, my angles were going up with those and down with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but those are about the only things really moving hard on. Okay. So, you know, and then vertically, you know, we have this, uh, this palm tree, the trunk is pretty vertical. The edges, you know, any of the edges of the buildings in them are moving, you know, pretty vertical. Mm -hmm. So, so when I'm sitting at, at my table, looking at my computer, I need to make sure that the picture I'm looking at is at the same level as my eye. No. To find the eye. No, you have to find out. Trying to think of it is, if I were taking that picture, where would I have been? You know. Oh. Okay. Okay. Where was I standing in relationship to everything else? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, and then, if you have like this is a kind of a one point perspective, like the angles of your buildings and stuff like that, you could literally take and, and draw a line straight back and then take a line and draw this straight back and see where that comes together, which is really about right there. Okay. And then check, okay, so if I start there, does that angle line up? And it does, see? you know, does the angle of this building kind of line up? Yeah. Pretty much so this one and this one seem to be the same height. It kind of does something funky here. Kind of goes up and down. But, you know, overall, you know, that's that takes you back to that now, you know, vanishing point on on the uh, uh, level or how uh, uh, another thing, it it does look like the the build the, the buildings that are on the right are bigger. Than the building that are on, look at the doors and everything. They're bigger than the ones that are on the left. So, am I closer to the left looking in, and closer to the right looking in? Um, no, not really. I mean, okay, if you look at the scale of this door, mm. and then you look at the scale of this door, they're about the same. And see, they're this one's slightly further away. This one's slightly closer. And see, this door is much closer to us, and so it's getting bigger. Right. See, and then this window, you know, looks huge, right? Because it's closest to us. Where the window over here, it's a smaller window, but look, see the height from here to the ground? About the same as it is from here to here. Um, in, in reality, it's like the, the building right here is taller than any of these. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So oh, okay. you know, they're, they're not the exact same height. You know, there's some variation in there. But the important thing is knowing that, you know, that's from that vanishing point, if you follow that out, you know, to the height of the building, okay, you, you found the angle for that side. And then this side is, yeah, you know, not quite as steep, you know, it's a little bit lower. And see, it falls right in along you know, these, and takes you about, really about right for them, okay? You know, the world, the world is not absolutely perfect, and, you know, yeah, architects and, and people don't build houses, you know, perfectly the same height and everything else, you know, and, and particularly old cities like this, there's a lot of variation, but, you know, but finding that, that vanishing point gives you something to sort of go by. And then you know that, oh, okay, this section of the building I need to make a little low, lower, this one I need to make a little taller, and you can adjust it from there, okay? I think I've got it. You think you got it? Oh, okay, we got three comments up here. <laughs> okay, let's see, all right. Let's see, we got a chat going on. Jackie Lattimore, Wanda, Narrow Live. She, she's, oh, that's. She sent us some, uh, some information. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's the other professor, I guess, that she was talking about. 
Okay. All right. So anybody got anything else we need to talk about before we all go away today? Where's my, my drawing? That's a good question. Where are your drawings? I didn't see anything from you. I sent to you Friday. PMs, uh, 8 to p.m. <laughs> I didn't see them, June. Let's see. Yeah, because I, I didn't have, I had some things from you last week. Three, uh, suppose it's three job. Okay. Oh, you mean from not, huh? not, not this Friday, but from the previous Friday? No, no, the, this Friday. Well, we only two, did the drawings. It's two drawings, but I did the extra by myself. Extra by yourself. Okay, let's go back and take a look at now. Let's, let's see if June sent us anything. And you said you sent right. them on Friday? Wow. Are you right? Yes. Um, one, June, my drawings. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the 13th. Um, yeah, I sent the 13th. Okay, let's see. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for them to load. Um, huh, okay. Right here. Let's see if I can download them. And we'll take a look at them. Okay. We can Thank do you. We can do stuff like that. Right. Yeah, there's your girl from San Miguel. And here's the dancer. Okay. All right. So let's see how that works. All right. Let me find them on the desktop. And we'll open them up and we'll take a look and see. We're not going to look at that today because we're out of time. All right. Uh, okay. So, uh, so June is doing runway models, I guess, in, you know, or bikini <laughs> contest. Let's see. All right. So tell us about your drawing. Okay. She's on a palm tree. Yeah. So she's walking on it's, the palm tree? Yeah. Okay. This is the, uh, from the pic picture. It's from a picture. Okay. All right. So, so you didn't go down to like Cabo or something like that? You know, what, no, I didn't. <laughs> we, were so, we were so hopeful, you know, it'd be nice to go down someplace like that. Yeah. Anybody else kind of feeling like they want to take a tropical vacation? You know? All the time. That's I it. do. All the time. It's my yeah? Yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. Do you think we're no, going right anywhere? I'll go anywhere. Yeah, do you, do, you think we, do you think we could get uh, Fulton County to schedule our class down at like, you know, Cabo San Lucas or something like that? Yay! Yeah. You guys would sign up for that? Absolutely. Yes, to Cabo definitely. My daughter just uh, vacations there and intends to move there. Oh, ah, okay. All right. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll make that request to Sabrina and see what she can do with it. <laughs> I mean, you know, full uh, time needs. When you make that request, make for a, pre, a prepaid vacation for for us. Uh, well, you know, I mean, look, Fulton County's got to do something with all of that stimulus money. You know, I mean, come on now, you know, <laughs> and that would definitely be stimulating to us, right? So that would. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. All right. So June, tell us a little bit about your drawing here. Okay. So you got a, you got a, a, a girl in a bikini and she's walking out on a palm tree. Okay. And you took it from a photo. Any idea where the photo was from? Uh, from the uh, WeChat. Some, somebody posted uh, uh, the article. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Including this uh, picture. I said, uh, it's very interesting. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Kind of an interesting. Free shot. <laughs> okay. 
But my question is, where where was it at? You, you have I don't know exactly. Okay. Just some some tropical place with palm trees along yes. the beach. Okay. All right. So, all right. You know, looking at the figure, okay, you got a couple of nice things going on. Okay, one, she looks like she's moving, right? You've got the, uh, let me see. You've got the right leg moving back, right? And you've got the other leg feeling like it's slightly moving forward, okay? Now, the only odd thing about it is the angle of this foot seems to be turned kind of almost <laughs> And down a little bit, yes. Yeah, and it kind of needs to kind of run along the, the palm tree a little bit, a little more of that angle. Um, now, this, you know, like I said, the legs work pretty well. Now, the shoulders, she looks a little bit stiff, okay? Now, okay. I'm, I'm just kind of looking at this, and I'm kind of thinking that this leg, this arm, was actually forward because that's usually what happens if this leg's going back, that arm's going forward. And then yeah. this arm would be coming back toward us, right? And so yes. you got this one longer, and that makes sense, and you got this one a little shorter. The problem is we don't, we don't see the arm bend anywhere. It's like they're very stiff, right? And so okay. somewhere in here, you kind of want to break that one. Okay. Elbow and see that that lets this move forward and then it pushes the forearm back away from us a little bit. And that's about the only thing we're doing right there. Um, okay, yeah, so I yeah, got it. Figure yeah. out how are you gonna get that to go away from us, okay? Okay. Now, evidently there were some mountains or something across the water over there, more island or something, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and you see how you have, it kind of runs into the tree, right? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, my recommendation is don't do that. You know, don't, don't connect it to the tree so much. Um, oh, okay. you know, bring it in at a different angle or something like that. Uh, you know, maybe show where the, the edge of the mountain is back here and, and some sky through it. Um, because right now, because of the way that you've got this palm frond coming down and how it lines up with the mountain here and how it lines up with the mountain there, it sort of makes it part of the tree. Okay. And it kind of flattens it out, where if you had it at a slightly different angle, it would read like it was sitting behind it better. Okay? Okay, thank you. Makes sense? All right, and we know Bernice, Yes. Where's our eye level on this? Uh, mm, I would say at the top of her bikini, the no. bottom part of her bikini. No, our eye level is right here. She's up above us. Oh, gee. Is that her I eye got, eye? <laughs> <laughs> and Bernice, that was not a trick question. <laughs> but yeah, you got to look at these things. Kind of think about I it. Think, I, think, I, I, think, I think I'm confusing eye level center of the, of the page on that. I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm doing something yeah. wrong. Your eye level is wherever you are in relationship to, you know, the horizon line and all the other objects, you know, in, in the drawing. Oh, okay. In this case, okay. it's above us, see, above our eye level for the most part. You know, her feet are below our eye level. But see, right, our eye level is really right about her knee. Okay. Okay. And you see, we've got the horizon line right there. It tells us you know, where the eye level, where our eye level is. Because that horizon line, that's always gonna be your eye level, always. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So, yeah. so even, even if there's a building there, I should look for the imaginary horizon line. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can see a horizon line, then that tells you exactly where you're at. Okay. But like in, in like in the, the, the picture that we had, was the one that's coming up, you have to make that imagine what the horizon line actually is. Yeah, yeah, because you couldn't really see it off in the distance, right? Because there was a lot of stuff in the way, right? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm going to get there. I'm going to get there. <laughs> you will. Okay. 
So now in this particular case, all right, we've got the edge of the wall right there. Now that's not our horizon line. Our horizon line or our eye level is really kind of up here where she is. Um, but okay, so we've talked about this a couple of times today, June. You got the uh -huh. you got the overall movement of the figure, but what you didn't get was you didn't really get that foot like right under the head. Could have been back a little bit further. See, because it's got to be right up under her head here, keep her balanced. And the other thing was that the width here needed to be a little bit wider. So if you would have moved this all forward, right, to about right here, then her head would have lined up right over her foot. You get that? Okay. Yeah. Um, and in this case, see, we've got the girl walking down the street. And, you know, you did a similar thing. You, uh, she's either a very big girl or we have... Uh, <laughs> Or we have, uh, you know, Lilliputians living in the houses on each side, okay? You know, munchkins, you know. This is, this, is a munchkin. <laughs> this is San Miguel de Munchkin land. <laughs> they got very short people there, you know, going through those doors. And she's an exceptionally big girl, okay? Yeah. So, so, yeah, it's, it's a thing with the scale. Um, and... You know, reality is that uh, the, the easy thing to fix that, you know, she's fine. It's just you needed more of an angle here on your buildings so that they were taller. Right? Oh, I see. Okay. Got you it. Know, <laughs> windows and stuff and made the ta doors taller. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Got it. <laughs> okay. Too All tall. Right. The big girl. Okay. Thank you. Well, yeah, it's either make her smaller or make the buildings bigger. Than her. Okay, and yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I would, be, yeah. I would yeah. opt for making the buildings bigger. I, okay. Yeah. So that church should be bigger too? No, mm -mm. no, I'm just talking about the buildings. No? Inside. Yeah, the, the church is, you know, further away. And, and I think. Oh, yeah, it's okay. further away. Yeah, okay. but yeah. See, if, if this is our eye level, right, almost right at the top of her head, see? Yeah. Could have, you know, made that angle up and then, you know, like this point would have moved up here. Yeah, yeah. And that building okay, I got it. Yeah. much taller. See? Same thing yes. on the other side. See? Mm -hmm. About much taller. Yes. And more proportional to her. Okay? Okay, I got it. Yeah. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. So, going once, going twice. Anything else? Anybody need to talk about the weather? Anything happening in life? <laughs> Anything? It's been raining, but well, we need it. It's raining, but we need. It. It's been so dry so long, so I don't. I don't mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't mind. I don't mind it raining. It's fine. You know, it's it's water. It'll it'll, it'll end up somewhere. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As long as it stays warm, I can yeah, take it the rain. Be, as long as it stays warm. Yeah, it'd be, it would be nice if it could have stretched out the six inches of rain that we got today over like four or five days. Then it would have actually done the trees and things more good. So when it all comes down like that, it just all ends up in the, you know, storm drains and, really and stuff like that. And doesn't really stick around to saturate the ground as much. But, um, okay. Well, I hope you're all okay. Thank you for coming, all 14 of you, well, four have checked out already. Um, but we will be back here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock and we're gonna be talking about pushing some paint around and I'm going to introduce you to a guy by the name of Bryce Liston, who is a painter and also a, a, another guy who is uh, Charles Walls. Uh, Liston, I'm not sure where he's at, but Walls is here in, uh, in Atlanta, you know, in the Atlanta area. So you probably, you may have seen actually some of his work uh, around from time to time. So we're gonna be talking about them and uh, also got a video on a young guy who's doing abstract landscape painting in plein air. So. Wow. Abstract? Yep, yeah. That'll be interesting. Yeah, he's, 
he's got an interesting way of working. <laughs> you know, it's 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 a bit chaotic, but you know, it's it's interesting. You know, what he comes up with. So we're gonna take a look at him tomorrow. Okay. Alrighty. So we will see you at 10 a.m. Okay. Till then. Bye, everybody. Thank you. All right. See you later. Everybody. Thanks for sending in work and stuff. Bye. Uh -huh.